What's going on? Welcome back to the podcast. Really quick before we dive in, the online fitness business mentorship sale is live right now. Mm. Link in the show notes. If you want to join the online fitness business mentorship for $300 off, I'm going to say that one more time, $300 off. Now's the time. We only do this twice per year. And one time we will reduce that. We'll do like a discount. And the next time we're going to say, hey, we're going to increase the price, right? So the price will increase. This is going to be the lowest that you will ever be able to get in the mentorship for, the lowest ever. So if you want to join, now is the time. If you want to grow your business, you want to reach more people, grow your social media, impact more people and build your business, this is the time. Link in the show notes. Let's get into the episode. Hello, Jordan. What's going on, Michael? I can't prove this, <laughs> but I'm convinced that rotational core work has a direct correlation with quality of bowel movements. What do you think? I I know that you're very in touch with your bowels. Uh-uh. I m- maybe in 2020, but since you started your fiber... You are the king of bowel movements. I'm definitely not the king. And you've definitely researched different types of bowel movements more than I have. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was for a client. All right. <laughs> Irrelevant. <laughs> Still researched it a lot. And I know you've, sent, you've, you've always done this those, thing. You send me like, images. Of you'll like, like press uh, on your stomach and like try and push it down. And like you notice a big difference with it. Never happened. Never happened. That's a hundred percent false. It absolutely maybe, would maybe happen. in late 2016 there were one time, but no. Oh my god, what is going on? You would always be pressing around and like pushing it down and stuff. Let's not take the Lord's name in vain here, okay? All right, brother. All right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> you don't. You don't think it. You don't Dude, notice a difference. I, I know not, you notice a not huge difference to, when you started the fiber. I've never paid attention to rotational movements impacting i mean i've always included rotational movements and like so maybe it's just that's also been just that's always all been you know. there that's yeah all you know i've i've never not included rotational movements in my training you know mm. what i mean I see. um but the fiber pff, nothing's like the fiber i'll tell you that right now in terms of not only frequency but quality and just like the ease of the whole situation. And for anyone who thinks like, why are these two idiots like talking about poop? Like what relevance does this have? There are actually some direct correlations between the quality and frequency of your bowel movements and health. So 100%. Digestive health and other types of health that we're not going to dive too deep into right now, but it is relevant. All right, let's, uh, let's springboard off. Let's go, let's take an aggressive cut on the subject change. I'm 35 years old. I turned 36 in April. I have never felt old until, I don't know, sometime in the last year or two. But I had a moment, I think it was yesterday. First, I saw another person with like their pants tucked into these high socks and these like weird, <laughs> like oversized shoes. Were lifting. they young? Yeah, yeah, like a 20 year old. Oh, yeah, yeah. At the gym. And I was like, man, this is like a style. And normally I feel like the new style, like I'm somewhat in touch with it. I understand it. I'm like, I might even adopt it at some point. But this just feels like so foreign to me. And uh, and that combined with, and then at uh, Chipotle, there was a, a Gen Z worker there who, you know, I, I was like, she just dead pan face. She might've been having a bad day. Who knows? But, you know, had a lot of tattoos and piercings and like young person stuff. And I was like, how's it going? She just looked at me like this. And then, and then I ordered and she just looked at me like this. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't know. I feel old. Dude, you're preaching. Yeah. I mean, I, I had that, I had that within the last year from jujitsu. And I always remember watching, I remember like, remember watching athletes and being like, oh man, they're older, they're older, like professional athletes, college athletes. Now I'm looking at these games, I'm like, I'm older than almost all of these athletes. And it was funny because in jujitsu, I was talking to my coach, I was like, I just don't get like how this kid and that kid and this kid and that kid, like they're just beating me. And my coach goes, they're kids. He's like, you're 31. I was like, 
and in my mind, I'm like, yeah, that's young. He's like, it's young in life, but like in sports, you're old. Mm -hmm. He's like, these 20, 22, 24 year old kids, like they're savages. And Mm -hmm. like, they make like, that's why like the master's division starts at 30 in Mm jujitsu. But like, I've never, I never thought I would get to a point where I used age as a justification for not being a certain level of, uh, competent in sports. And now that's like, oh, well, yeah, he's 22. Yeah, he's 24. Oh yeah, young kid. Da, da, da. It's like, man, I, I'm actually using that as a, as a justification in my sports. Now. It's, it's a weird feeling to feel old. Have you noticed it anywhere else? My nose. Your nose? <laughs> So you know how your nose and your ears never stop growing? Uh-huh. And you know how like when you look at some like old dudes, like some old dudes, like their noses are huge and you're like, were they born like that? Or no, like it just continues to grow their whole life. Mm-hmm. Dude, my nose is, it's like really getting, it's like getting to be like, you know, that that cliche, like, oh, the Jewish nose. Like, dude, I'm getting that Jewish nose, that old man. And I'm seeing it. Like it's now extending further down like my mustache line, mm-hmm. like you see this, how like it, it's here and it like dips down a little bit. See how mm-hmm. yours doesn't do that? Okay, yeah. Dude, I'm gonna have a huge nose. If I make it to like 80, cool. 90, it's gonna be huge. Distinct. So yeah, I see it, I see it there, yeah, yeah. It's gonna huge. be distinct. <laughs> the only reason I knew of that was, maybe I knew of it before then, but I remember you linking me to something a couple months back where you, there was like a lot of anti-Semitism and someone, there was an Instagram post and you commented something and then people were commenting underneath like nose jokes, basically. Yeah, nose and, and little hat jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the little hats rule the world. Yeah. Uh, where, where else have you noticed it? Age? Yeah. My nose. <laughs> Hey, real quick first, you don't think that is in, are you sure that's happening or do you think it has to do with the angle of your camera? No, it's a hundred percent happening. And the fact that you even think it's a potentially a camera angle thing just let, lets me know. It's like, it's definitely happening. I've been thinking oh, about I thought cam- it was the angle of your camera that makes <laughs> your nose look so big. That's not, I didn't think your nose looked big. You brought it up. I thought angle of camera because- I've been thinking about changing the angle of my camera because there was some research about like looking down makes your, gives like your eyelids more weight, which actually makes you look more tired compared to looking slightly up, which forces your eyelids open. I don't know the research, but I know that looking up supposedly gives you more alertness and I'm looking down at a laptop. I'm thinking maybe, you know, we're on episode 108. Maybe it's time to really like overhaul this podcast setup who knows if you're not watching the video pods you're missing out because we're getting you can see my nose you can see mike's nose you can instagram youtube spotify anywhere video pods are available at personal trainer podcast yes yeah and these full episodes go on youtube (sighs) full episodes courtesy of our amazing uh david our podcast podcast producer yeah producer engineer wizard um the clips he's been putting on youtube have been fire Mm -hmm. he's been crushing those yeah thumbnails. the other places you've the other places you've noticed this uh dialogue like uh vocabulary in terms like bussin for real for real uh i I don't know all these words that i just like cap based based is based a young thing do you use based i might start Dude, it's def. I remember because there's all these young kids at jujitsu are using all these words that you just said, like cat based, um, all that. St- like I don't even know them, and it was funny because these young kids were making fun of me. They were like, oh, like <laughs> you don't even know." That. And I was, I, I felt so old. They were like mm-hmm. using all these words and talking in sentences that I don't understand. It's crazy. Yeah, and they're trying to educate me on on how to. And I and I told them one of them is struggling to get a job. And I said, and he like with these interviews, I was like, are you talking like this in your interviews? And he was like, and he said, bet. <clears throat> and I said, that, that is completely and utterly inappropriate to use in an interview. <laughs> I was like, if you interviewed for a job with me and you said bet, even if you were the perfect person for the job, I would not hire you. Abel was the first person I remember saying bet. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I remember Abel t- saying that years uh, ago. He might have started it, actually. Yeah, he might have. He's the I, man. I, when he, I remember we had a, like conversations for months about like how to use it properly because I didn't understand it. You and Abel did? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Abel, Abel, Rico, and I, we all like had conversations yeah. about how do you use bet? And I, I, it took me three months to get to like start to understand it. it you make a, an interesting point. Should the person not be saying those words in the interview? Like, are we just behind the times and, and things are moving and we need to adapt? And that's what's always happened. Like, you know, uh, radio to the television, television to it. Like, are we just being grumpy old men or? Is there actually like some level of objective professionalism that needs to be brought to the English language? I almost think it's neither of those. And here's what I think. I think it's it's about brand and my brand is it can be funny and I can swear and I can be unprofessional, but it's always educated. Right. It's like it's always like, hey, I want to have an educated discussion and I can say, fuck you and I can wear a wig and all of that stuff. But there, it's always coming from a place of education. I feel like being like based in no cap and all that stuff. It's like that's just not educated. You might. I think you're being old man when you're saying that you those so? words aren't. I think maybe. I don't know because I'm like you. I'm in the same boat as you. But I feel like looking down on people who talk like that. Or like saying that talking like that is a, is less educated. I don't know. Like what if someone conveyed a lot of the same points as you, but used all those words? But if I can't understand them, then I didn't, then they right, didn't convey right, but, it properly. But, but 12 to 21 year olds understand them perfectly. Then they should start their own fitness brand and not interview with me. And they can, <laughs> then they can use it all they want. And it'll be, be great. True. But it's not going into my brand. Cause that's not, that's not me, you know? Sure. And sure. I don't want them answering customer service emails being like, ah, bet. Like, your payment didn't go through, no cap, got you cut. Like, no, I don't want that. You know, like I that's for my brand. If they have it in their brand, it could definitely work. But for my brand, absolutely not. I don't think you'd say no cap if someone's payment didn't go through. I, what does no cap mean? I don't know. <laughs> cap means lying. So no, no cap means telling the truth. Cap is lying? I, uh, I think. I thought cap was like, oh, that's the limit. There, no cap is like no limit. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Are you sure? Nah. I'm way more sure than you are. That's for sure. <laughs> when people say no cap, I always say, oh yeah, there's no like limit. Like truth. <laughs> truth. <laughs> no. <laughs> no cap is truth. Well, I, uh, yeah, I'm quite certain. Could you say cap if they're lying? Like, oh, yeah. like, hey, that's cap. you're lying. Hey, that's cap. Yeah. You're lying? Really? That's what that means? Yeah. Wow. That is unbelievable. Uh, I'm reading a book. I'm listening to a book on audiobook. It's called stolen focus, how, like why your attention is so bad and what to do about it, something along those lines. Author's name's Johan Hari, I think. Um, but his thesis, I really agreed with in the beginning, which is like, you know, consuming on social media is, is hurting our attention and our focus. And, uh, and like, I assume the book was, here's what we can do about it. Um, but in reality, the book is, yeah, I'm, two thirds of the way through. And it's more like, there's not really much we can do about it. We can maybe do a little bit on a personal level, but this is a systemic issue. And like, you know, he proposes a lot of ideas like government should regulate social media and uh, like things that I don't agree with. But Ugh, the, the government, you don't want the yeah, government. All right. Yeah. He's, That's a bad idea. He seems, he seems like big on regulation. Basically the, the point I'm making is a lot of the examples in the book that he uses and a lot of like, um, the book starts out pretty objective and his ideology seems to seep in more and more as you get deeper and deeper, which I think is, I think a lot of it's still good, but it made me realize like both sides, when, when both sides are saying something, meaning when some, when one person's like, you know, and we're not going to go into politics. I can't even believe I'm bringing this up. It's going to be real quick. When, when one side's like, Facebook is right wing and they got Trump elected and the Russians and da da da. And then the other people side say is Facebook like- Facebook is right wing? Well, in the book, he does. But then other people- He's are out like, of his mind. <laughs> okay. But th- that's my point. <laughs> and then there's other people who are like, no, all the big tech companies are left leaning like da da da. But when the arguments are coming from both sides, it's like, it, it makes me- uh, it makes me want to discredit or ignore the initial hypothesis of like 
this thing is ruining our lives mm. and and makes me want to go more into like, no, like times are always changing. Technologies are always changing. Almost more of like a Gary approach to it. Like this is yeah. what it is. I'm going to use it for my benefit and for what I want to do. Um, I'm not going to stop it. We're not going to change it. Like what good is complaining about it going to do? But mm -hmm. it's an inter it's an interesting, it's something I was thinking about a good amount. And then I stumbled across the book. I was like, oh, this could be interesting. And it is, but made me realize like, I don't think this is the devil. And like, you know, if you need to consume less, consume less, but you can also just use the technology that exists for your goals and your life and your ambitions and whatever you want to do. Yeah. It's definitely not the devil for sure. It is like, there are, it's how you use it. It's, it's, it's how you use it that can make it, make it or break it no matter what, like times are always changing no matter what. And, and you know, evolution, and we're always going to adapt and all of that. I think, um, th there, I think there's definitely something to be said for, I'm trying to think of an, of an analogy. I don't know if this is going to be a good one, but we'll sort of roll with it just to see how it goes. This might be really stupid, but there are animals all over the world, right? animals everywhere, right? And if you take an animal from one place in the world and bring it to another place in the world where that's not its natural habitat, it can become an invasive species, right? And that invasive species can wreak havoc on the, the ecosystem, on the animals there. Uh, and we see this all over. We see this like with an invasive species comes in and then it will like, it will eat all of the, all the, the food sources and supplies than other animals that are, are natural to there and maybe can't be, they're not, they can't kill that animal they're not its natural predator or whatever they like essentially can eliminate other animals who are natural to that area um it's not saying that that invasive species is inherently bad it's like it's just it shouldn't be there and in that quantity and like when you put it in a place in which it's not supposed to be then it can like really cause damage and i think that's where social media can sort of tie in with that it's like we're definitely this isn't it, social media, I feel like, is an invasive species in some in some sense, okay. in which it's like there are so many different platforms, and each platform is changing so drastically, and there it's finding what is so addictive to it, and people are over consuming it, and it's become an invasive species in our mind. Whereas like we use it all the time, nonstop. Even myself, dude. I'll know if I go to the bathroom. Dude, I can't take a piss without taking my phone out and looking at social media for seven seconds. And I notice that. So I'm like, I'm going to leave my phone on the couch. And I try and do that. Sometimes I don't. It's like, I think that's a problem. Um, so, but it, it's about how you use it and how it's impacting your life. And he argues that the designers of these apps and gives lots of stories and, and interviews a lot of people are so good at making the, the platform so addictive that people mm -hmm. who preach personal responsibility are are giving people false hope, essentially. He's basically saying like, it's not your fault that you can't set the phone down and you have to take it when you go take a piss because this thing's so addictive and getting more addictive that it's it's their fault, the creators of it, and someone needs to regulate that for your benefit. Whereas I tend to lean more on your side, like th this is the hand we're dealt in this life. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on what I can control, which is- yeah. You know, whatever that means. So if that means setting it down to go take a pee or go for a walk without your phone. Saw an interesting tweet. If you can't go for a walk without headphones, you're you have a dopamine problem or something along those lines, which is mm. I was like, oh man, I can't remember the last time I went for like a legitimate walk by myself without any stimulation, podcast, music, whatever. It seems so foreign to me. Remember playing outside? Dude. For hours and hours and hours? I remember lying down on, on the ground and like just playing with the fibers of my carpet and like just running around outside and yeah, dude, a hundred percent. It was the best childlike wonder. And I think, I don't know, we'll, we'll move on from this momentarily. I think that, you know, spending the week in Florida, having way less screen time, played a couple of rounds of golf with my dad, like spending time on the beach, just, you know, screen time was... 25 per, it was 75% lower than normal. I felt so good. And my output was basically the same. Like, so when you can, when you can, uh, use it for creation rather than for short form, addictive, mindless, don't necessarily want to be using it consumption. I think you're in a real winning position. And then if you can cycle with that and build habits on it, you can do some really good things, particularly when it comes to growing an online fitness business. Dude. Preaching. Yeah. I love it. Jordan. Michael. How ridiculous is it 
that in this day and age and in our society, that if you choose to just eat like chicken and salmon and apples and sweet potatoes and normal from the ground, from the earth, healthy food choices, that you're this like social pariah who's <laughs> on a thing called dieting. But if you're eating Velveeta cheese and nacho Doritos and Cheetos, you're eating a standard American diet. Like, like how did we get to this place? But that's not the question. I, I'm not – just how ridiculous is it that eating healthy is like dieting and that's a problem and maybe a mental health disorder, but eating a normal American diet is like good, normal. No one bats an eye. Clips Nation right there. Bro, that's going to mm. be – it's gonna be mm. a great clip. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Um, dude, it's I mean, it's insane. It, it's I don't really understand it. I do I do and I don't. I don't understand it from a logical perspective. I do understand it from a people perspective and behavior perspective. Um from the perspective of a, most people are not happy with their choices in many, in many areas of life. They're not happy with the choices they're making. They're not happy with who they are. And it's easier to try to control what someone else does mm. to make yourself feel better than to control what you do. Mm. And so this is the whole scenario where you go out to eat with someone and you order a salad and the other person is like, oh, well, I don't want to get a pizza if you're just going to get a salad. And it's like, my decision shouldn't affect your decision or maybe it should maybe me getting a salad should be like you know what i don't need that pizza right now i'm gonna get the salad as well or you know what fuck it i want the pizza i'm gonna have it but you don't need to say oh like you're such a little bitch you're gonna get a salad you're so boring <laughs> you're a party pooper you know what i mean it's like mm -hmm. it's easier to try and shame and guilt the other people and i think that's what a lot of like food pushing is where a lot of people are like oh just eat this just eat this just eat this oh come on just have a bite have a bite have a taste it's not going to kill you i really don't think it's it's because they want you to enjoy it and they really think you're going to enjoy it i think it's because it makes them feel better about them having it and they can justify it more so i think it's like a, a self-preservation thing Mm. Makes total sense. Is it easier? I mean, clearly for, for some people it is, but you said it's easier to control someone else's behavior rather than your own. Like in my mind, I think it would be easier for, and yeah. Okay. I, I don't, I don't know if it's always necessarily easier. I think it's the action of pushing on someone else is easier than the action of changing your own behavior. And a lot, like you're an ISTJ. So someone's like, oh, come on, Mike, have a bite. Like you're going to be like, no, I'm good. Thank you. And you're fine. But I know for me personally, in many instances, mm -hmm. I've eaten something I didn't want to eat to make the other person happy um, or mm -hmm. to try and not be rude. I've done that all the time. I still do it. Um, even like, you know, with me, you'd be like, hey, are you hungry? And I'd be like, I can eat. Yeah, like, but then, but then I always, always like, no, no, no. You would always be like, hey, no, are you actually hungry? Do you want to eat? And like, but most people are not like that. Most people... I'm I'm very much a people pleaser in so many ways. So like I would be like, yeah, I'll I'll have, I'll have a bite. And in my mind, I'm like, listen, whatever. I know it's not a big deal. And then I'll eventually, you know, I'll be a little bit more strict on the back end because of that. But like, I don't know if if most people don't have that education, that knowledge that they can do that. And there are times that I wish I would just be like, no, I'm good. But you know, there, there's a trade off with that. Every it's like, you know, do I want to? Like, it could come off a, a little bit as rude. Like when I go to my wife's grandparents' house, there's no way. I'm not like, I know that her grandma slaved for hours to make these desserts. There's no way I'm going to say I'm good. Like I'm eating them and I'm going to eat a lot of it because it makes me so happy to see how happy she gets when I eat a lot of it, which I think is also funny as well. Like when you eat a lot of what someone else cooks, like even my wife, I go over the top when she cooks something that is like really good. I'm like, I'm, I go, I sit down, I'm like, Hey, and I, I'm like, I want you to know this is the best dinner you've ever cooked. And she smiles so, like she gets so happy. People, they really do appreciate it. So it is an interesting balance. It's, it's so funny you went there because I was literally going to say, last week with my wife's 91-year-old grandma, she made chocolate chip cookies from scratch. She made uh, fresh baked bread from scratch. Like all of this stuff oh, it's so with, good. with the dinner. 
And this was, you know, a, a handful of days after I had the story where I looked at myself on the beach and I was like, oh, I got to clean things up a little bit. And I had a few dialed days and then we had that night. And most people, if they were offering or if it was there, or even if I thought like someone might have wanted me to, if I had the awareness of of knowing that, wouldn't affect me. But in that situation, it's like 91-year-old grandma, like getting up in the morning, making this for us. Like I'm eating this stuff. <laughs> yeah, even if, exactly. Even if it doesn't fit, even if it's day four of my thing. I'm eating this. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to let her know. And then the next day I'm going to be back on. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's interesting though. It's like there's levels to who you're okay with appeasing and what the situation is. Yeah. If, if my buddy and I go grab lunch and he's like, oh, you're getting a, I mean that we're, we're almost in a different position in situations like that. Maybe 15 years ago, if that happened and a buddy was like, oh, you're getting this, it'd be like, there might be a little bit of pressure, but now given, you know, what we do for work, it's more like asking questions. Oh, you're getting that? What are you? And then more mirroring yeah. from them and, and like a yeah. level of, of learn, like one way learning basically. I got more shit for it in high school and college and, and post-college than I do now. And I also, I think it's partly because, you know, I, I wasn't. You were more strict then? No, no, no. I was more strict, but I think it's it's more just because now it's my career and people often will expect it more. Um, I also think it's the environment. I ha I mostly hang out with people who like to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, the people that I hang out with, the, the vast majority of time, it's like people are like, we all, like when we go out, we go out for each other's company not to indulge. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's, it's not like, Hey, we're going out so we can eat like shit. It's like, we're going out so we can hang out and let's get food by the way. Cause we'll be a little bit hungry, but we're going to focus on foods that make us feel good. Like that's the majority of people I hang out with now, which when you're a kid, it's not always like that. You're just hanging out with whoever's in your town and whoever's in your classes and all that. And it's just, it's a very different environment. So I think environment plays a huge factor in that as well. It does. And, and it's important to remember, even if you're hanging out with people who want to, you know, who are consistently and regularly eating unhealthy, like not only does your environment impact you, but you can have an effect on your environment. Mm, so, yeah. so the choices that you make in their presence, like you might feel some kind of pressure from them, but, and, and there's nothing wrong, obviously, but like there's nothing wrong with eating the pizza now and again. But if you can somewhat consistently make the good choice, they might see you doing that. They might see the progress you're making. They might start to ask you questions. Your positive habits and behavior could rub off on the people you're spending time with, which makes you not only, uh, not only are you getting better, but you're having a positive impact on the people around you, which is incredible. Clips Nation. Oh, clips Nation yeah? right there. I got some oh, clips yeah. rolling today. Let's Dude, go. You got clips this. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. I think it's an important discussion. It is very interesting. I mean, I, I've been diving you know, we dedicated our book to all the highly palatable <laughs> foods without which the book wouldn't be necessary. But I've been diving more and more into it. And it's just, man, it's so because my nutrition has been dialed ever since I started my mini cut. And like mini cuts been over for a few months now. And I've still been losing weight. Like today, I was like 146, like losing wow. weight very, very slowly. But like, yeah. you know, my, my nutrition's dialed. And um, I, it's so it's so funny, like how when I don't eat those foods regularly, I don't crave the foods. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I start to eat them regularly, the cravings go out outrageous. It's like, as soon as they become a regular thing, it's like, I've got to have more, I've got to have more. But if it's something that I have every once in a while, it's almost like too much when I have it. So, okay, this is fine. I have it. I'm done. Like, I don't even really feel good at this point. So I, I don't want it. But if you make it a consistent habit, man, there was because my one of my inner circle members, her name is Connie. God bless her. Like every like two or three months, she'll send my wife and I all these baked goods. And she sends us I, these I like, cookies, some. the M&M cookies. Uh -huh. Yeah, you had them. They're amazing. Insane. They're insane. And so every time I'd come down to my office, which would be multiple times a day, I'd have two of these cookies every time I came down to the office. And I was like, yeah, no wonder I gained like 12, 15 pounds when my wife was pregnant because like I was having two of these, like probably six of these cookies a day, like five days a week. And each one is probably at least 350, 400 calories, like just from the cookies. It's like, and, and I, they, dude, they were, del they're so good. They're so good. And now I can have one a couple times a week and I'm fine. Mm -hmm. But like, that's good for you. Way better. And, but it's, it's almost because when I have it in moderation now, 
You enjoy it more? I, it's, I enjoy it more, and I, it's like, it's overload. It's like sensory overload. It's mm-hmm. it's it's dopamine overload, and mm-hmm. like, you know, it's it's enough. One is plenty. Mm-hmm. But if you start to make it a regular habit, I feel, I feel like those cravings get more intense the more you do it. I agree. It's not like the more you do it, the more the cravings go away. It's like the more you do it, the more the cravings crank up. Mm-hmm. Do you find that there are levels in the, the word is probably trigger foods, but I don't even want to put it in that binary category because I think it's like, I think there's levels to it. It's not just trigger food, non-trigger food. For me at the top of foods that I can't and don't want to eat one of are chocolate chip cookies. Like Mm. there's no world in which when I'm on track and I'm doing good things and I'm pretty dialed in that I'm going to have one chocolate chip cookie, like absolutely not. But there are like uh, snacks or like treats that I can have in moderation that don't, that aren't like, so I I don't even want to say stimulating, like basically that I can eat in moderation and not want more of and feel good after like kettle corn is a good example where it's like. Two, two cups. I can put two cups in a bowl, which is eight fat, 18 carb, and uh, I don't know, whatever, somewhere between one and two protein, three protein, something like that. And uh, and that like is a perfect amount of sweet after dinner, and I don't need more. It's like, good, a little bit of kettle corn. But if you were to take the same macros and calories in chocolate chip cookie form, then immediately when I'm done with it, I'm like, okay, I either need more of those cookies or like, is there any ice cream around? Or like, it makes me yeah. want more of that. And, yeah. and understanding for yourself what those foods are that kind of hit the spot, but don't send you over the edge versus the ones where you're like, this just makes me want more of it is uh, is really important and uh, a great skill to have. Yeah, dude, a hundred percent. It's funny, my, we have kettle corn and we love kettle corn. Have you had... um? It's called Boom Chicka Pop. Have you heard of that? Bro, have I heard of it? I founded the company. I'm the first taste <laughs> tester of all. Yes, I've, I didn't find the so, company. So, you know, like it's the, sweet, amazing. the sweet, dude, it's um, the unbelievably good. Yeah, the purple bag. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's, so my wife and I are watching TV last night and she brings the whole bag over, sits down, takes a handful out and starts eating it. And she's like, it immediately stands up gets a bowl, pours in the bowl and puts the bag away. And she says, I would have eaten the entire bag Mm -hmm. if if I just sat here with that because she had one bite and she was like, this is unbelievably good. Mm -hmm. And she immediately got up, put it in the bowl, put the bag away and sat down and that was it. If I have the bag next to me, I'm a goner. The entire thing will be gone easily, like easily. But you know- The Target bag, not the Costco bag. No, like the- the regular bag. Yeah, it's yeah. not like a small bag. It's not like you know. There's not like yeah, twelve kernels in there. No, it's no, a, it's a good size. It's a yeah. good size bag. There's a bunch of servings, but Costco makes a bag that's like, you don't know about this because you're not living that suburban life quite yet. But Costco makes a real bag. No, no, this isn't like a big bag of rice. You know, that's like a four hundred pound bag of rice. This is like a. It's still a family size bag. It's a party size where yeah. it's eight, ten servings, to, something like that in there. Yeah. It's supposed to last for multiple people, mm-hmm. uh, but I could eat the whole thing easily. But, you know, it's, and it's just the cliche advice, but it really, you know, putting it into a, a single serving container helps a lot. And it's funny because even we can forget that from time to time, right? Like I will eat half the bag, um, but if I measure it out and I put it in a bowl beforehand so I know how much I'm having, then I don't. You'd only eat half the bag. You Would you ever eat the whole bag? No, you wouldn't do that. No. I, You're on a different level. My, my, the connection between my hunger and my actions is more tightly knit than average. That's how I know you never had a binge eating issue is like, you don't just eat to eat or like eat for the taste. Like if you're full, you'll stop. With Not true. Not apple crisp, chocolate chip cookies, especially in the like, I don't know, 2004 to 2009 range. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like Whose apple crisp would you eat? My mother's. Oh, really? Yeah. The Should whole tree. With, with vanilla ice cream? Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, Man, but, I'm so hungry right now. Are you? <laughs> I'm getting hungry. <laughs> 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 I haven't eaten yet. I got back from jujitsu and got right on the call. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, what's the pre-workout that you made? Okay. I have, this isn't optimal from a science evidence based, <laughs> like we studied this compound at this effective dosage. This is 
the pre-workout I had this morning, which was the most delicious and like, yeah. So this is my current pre-workout and I'm a huge, huge fan of this. One, eight ounces of beet juice is the base. Okay. I'm going to say everything and then you can feel free to ask questions. Eight ounces of beet juice is the base. 10 grams of collagen. Let me collagen. fucking finish. Then you ask questions. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't what I was saying. All right. My pre-workout. Eight ounces of beet juice, 10 grams of collagen protein, like half, like a couple grams of beta alanine, not a full beta alanine, whatever, six grams, but like, I think it's between one and three grams. I don't measure, just a little pinch. And then uh, one third of a can of ghost energy drink citrus flavor. Okay. And one fifth of a scoop of euphoria pre-workout mango pineapple flavor. Oh, wow. Okay. You got, you got to mix up the, the powders and the beet juice and shake it all up and then add the energy drink. Cause if you put it all together and shake it up, it'll explode beet juice all over your house. Yeah. Don't yep. do that. And then, <laughs> uh, a bunch of ice. And it is sensational. Man, I need to get on the beet juice train. I love the taste. You don't have any questions. That's disappointing. It kind of hurts. Well, no, I do have questions. It's okay. okay. Dude, I do. I mean, obviously the collagen, that's the the main question. Why the collagen? Placebo. What's the placebo with the collagen? Hair and nails? Joints. Joints. No, no. I'm type two undenatured, like the real deal. I'm not, I'm not buying this stuff from the end cap at target high markup, trying to get that nail hair health. Like I'm, I'm good. I'm thinking shoulders, knees, hips, elbows. And, uh, I know collagen just gets railed in the fitness industry in a bad way. And, uh, well, some, in some places it's railed in other places it's revered. Yeah, but it's revered in like Fitzbo girl, like uh, you know, put like it in, put it in your coffee and and like yeah, yeah, yeah. Pilates yoga. I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm yeah. not I'm not doing it for muscle growth. Uh, do I count it towards my protein for the day? Sure, because it's 10 grams and I'm hitting 175. If I was had 100 grams of collagen for some reason, I wouldn't count it because it's not beneficial for hypertrophy. Um, but for there's some research showing type two undenatured collagen protein may have some benefits when it comes to how your joints feel. And I like the additional texture that it gives like a slight variance in texture in the drink. Um, Oh, does it make a little bit more thick? I wouldn't even use the word thick, but I would say it, yeah, it maybe thickens at 1%. Mm, okay. So not really, but yeah. And then the beet juice, the whatever's in beets, nitrates, ni- nitric oxide that leads to increased blood flow, vasodilator, pumps. And uh, yeah, I don't need a lot of caffeine. I'm sleeping at least nine hours a night on average right now. <sighs> and so uh, I'm, I'm limiting caffeine to 200 milligrams a day, basically. Rest days is less than that. But yeah, that's the pre-workout right now. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah. I like that. I'm going to have to try that. Do you get the beet juice at the grocery store? I do. There's only like one kind of beet juice. It's in the juice aisle. There's four servings. The brand is like Lakewood or something. They sell like organic juices. And uh, yeah, it's like a, a- Is it high in sugar? Glass bottle. Yeah, it's all sugar. It's beet juice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, the, it's like zero fat, 23 carb, three protein per eight ounces. Mm-hmm. I also like the pre-workout carb, especially in a deficit. Mm. Like the liquid pre-workout carb, I notice on the back end of my workout in terms of like energy and how I feel. That makes total sense. That makes total sense. What about the pomegranate juice? You were doing that for a while, right? Yeah. Well, this all started (laughs) unscientifically when I stumbled across a Dante Trudell post with his pre-workout on Instagram. And- I mimicked it and it it was like, there were probably at least 10 different supplements in it in massive quantities. <laughs> and it, it tore, like when people are like, oh, that tore straight through my body. And I didn't really know what they meant, like about Chipotle or about something like this tore through my GI tract. And so I reduced the dosage, reduced the dosage. It was like taurine, citrulline malate. Like, uh, I don't even Beta-alanine remember all of the and, things in there. Yeah. yeah like, uh, you know, I think there's some dextrose in there. There was like all kinds of- You put dextrose in there? Yeah. Yep. Oh, interesting. 
I mean, it ended up being like a like a one and a half liter bottle, <laughs> and and he for would, his pre work. <laughs> well, he, this I mean, he was doing these you know monster workouts, and yeah. he said he would drink half at the beginning and then kind of sip it. And then finished it by halfway mm. through his lift. So it, it was pre slash I mean, intro. Like, yeah. I, yep. Guy is unbelievably smart. But it started with that. And then I slowly started reducing things and reducing serving size to, you know, be able to handle it digestively. Got it. Got it. And then you switched from the, the uh, pomegranate juice to the beet juice. No, his, I, I don't remember. No, his, his included, his included both. Oh, oh got it. Okay. And I was like, how much juice do I really need to be? Because then it was like 50 plus grams of sugar. I was like, okay, even I can probably dial it a little slightly from here. Yeah. Nice, man. Jordan. Michael. Uh, Zoe emailed in. Zoe or Zoe? <laughs> Zoe. <laughs> Z-O-E. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Zoe. Zo. <laughs> <laughs> I have a good friend whose brother's name is Zoe. Uh, first, I absolutely love the pod. It's the only podcast that I listen to every week. By far my favorite. Thank you, Zoe. I'm sorry Thank for mispronouncing you, your name. I apologize. I was wondering if you had some good book recommendations for coaches in addition to Eat It. Of course, I get overwhelmed with everything out there and would love to know uh, about some of the good things you guys have read. Thanks so much. And then there were, I think we actually had other people ask about books too that I just haven't uh yeah. Oh, here. Uh, Megan, I think, also asked. Shout out, Megan. Thank you for listening to the pod, Megan. Jordan, what do you think about books? I wrote articles on this um, years ago. Wow. April 10th, 2015 is when I published this one. Um, I'm just going to pull up some of my like top favorites. So yeah, this is April 28th, 2015, and April 10th, 2015. Okay. So um, let's start with strength training. Strength training books. Um, here's one that I don't see anybody talking about nowadays. And I think this is just, a, this is like a pleasure read. It's fun. It'll definitely give you great ideas for content. Um, and it's, it's very helpful. It's by the late Mel Sif, absolute genius. Um, it's called facts and fallacies of fitness. Old book, amazing book. Uh, strongly recommend. It's not going to help you like with a lot of program design and stuff, but just a really great overall book for facts and fallacies of, of fitness. Really, really well done. Um, now, here's a book that I think, I think <laughs> it depends how in-depth in the science you want to go. I feel like this book should be required reading for all personal trainers. I think it's going to give you more information about what's happening physiologically and 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 program design than you'll get in basically any other text. Um, and it's it's relatively digestible. There's great diagrams in it. It's a it's a little bit of an expensive book, but it's super worth it. It's called The Science and Practice of Strength Training by Vladimir Zatsiorsky and William Kramer. Um, the science and practice of strength training. I think that if there was one book that I would recommend, like if I could only recommend one, it would be that. I, I think that would be like the, the best book for for everyone. Uh, obviously, Starting Strength by Mark Ripito and Practical Programming by Mark Ripito are, are great as well. Um, but we always recommend those. And, and I think that science and practice of strength training is something that's just massively overlooked. And if you're really interested in the science of this and understanding how this works and how muscle fibers work and, and how things are, are, uh, what's actually going on on a scientific level, this would be a really good book. I'll say this isn't a book that you should be parroting to social media and your clients. If you want to take the topics and make them so easy, a, a five-year-old can understand it. Amazing. But this is for your knowledge, not for your client's knowledge, if that makes sense. Um, and then another really good one, there, there's, I'll give two more for, for strength training. One of them is called Periodization Training for Sports by Tudor Bompa. Um, this is one of the coolest books I ever read. It gave me an entirely new insight into strength training program design and, and periodization models based on different sports, different goals, different outcomes. I'll be the first to say, for the average everyday gym goer, layman and laywoman, it's not 
super relevant, but it's also not irrelevant. This is a higher level of strength training and program design and periodization over the long term, but it's going to give you some really amazing insight into how higher level athletes, world level athletes, Olympic level athletes can peak for their performance. And, and it will give you some really cool ideas for your training uh, and, and for per, and performance. And then another really good one is called um, Special Strength Training Manual for Coaches by Yuri Verkashansky and Natalia Verkashansky, which I believe was, it was either his wife or his daughter, I forget, but Yuri Verkashansky is a legend. Um, and I love this book. It, it was like super practical, very relevant. It was exciting to read. Um, keep in mind, these are old Russian textbooks. <laughs> so it's like, it's, uh, they're not, the what you would read uh, like on Instagram and stuff, they're they're uh, they're not going to be as dopamine spiking, but really 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 great book, special strength training manual for coaches by Yuri Verkashansky Berkush- and Natalia Verkashansky. So that that's for strength training. Um, do you want to give your two cents before we go into nutrition, Mike? I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any like books for programming or strength training that really stand out as must reads in addition to the list that you just made. Okay. All right. So for nutrition coaches, and this is for all coaching, to be honest, but especially for nutrition, I think motivational interviewing, I've spoken about this a million times. We have an entire course in the mentorship all about it, how to use it, uh, client psychology and behavior change and motivation. So I think everyone should read motivational interviewing, even if you're not a coach and you're listening. Um, it's it, The title is motivational interviewing. The subtitle is helping people change, which I love. It's super simple and straightforward. That's exactly it. It allows you to help people make the changes they want to make. They're having trouble making. It's how to structure conversations, the words to use, the phrasing of the words, the order in which you use them. It's teaching you how to essentially manipulate a conversation in a good way to help the person that you're trying to help actually do what they want to do. Which you know, if you're a coach and you've tried coaching people and people know what to do but they're not doing it, this is a book you need to read. Um, they have a, a fitness version that is relatively new that I've never read. So I don't know if that's good, but the main version, the actual just original text of motivational interviewing is fantastic. Um, And there are a bunch of other books that I would recommend for nutrition, but I think honestly, one of the best things that anybody could do is subscribe to Alan Ergon's research review. I think, you know, if you're, if you're not sure about nutritional science and, and, and how to find the science and how to digest the science and, and read it, I think Alan Aragon's research review is literally the single best resource that you could ever have. And and I say this all the time, Mike, you say this all the time. I'm not paid for it. I'm not paid. This isn't a a paid uh, shout. Alan is a good friend, but I've been subscribed since like 2011 and I'll never unsubscribe. It's just, it's the best resource in the world. I was literally just going to say, like Alan had a book come out recently Within the last year, I forgot the yeah, name. Yeah, actually, the Flex- same day that we published our book, that's right. it was the same day. Flexible dieting. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, that's a great resource. I I yeah. skimmed through it. I haven't read it. It looks amazing, um, but I know it is because I know his work. And I was going to say for nutrition books, I don't even have a book to recommend as highly as I hold the free content that mm. Alan Aragon, Lyle McDonald. And Martin Burkhan have put out there. And a lot of people yeah. might not even know those names, right? I don't think Martin's making a lot mm-hmm. of fitness content. I don't know that Lyle's making fitness content. I, I don't know for certain. But what I do know is the free articles on their websites are, are the pillars on which the entire evidence-based fitness industry stands today. Like everyone who's talking about the components of metabolism, everybody who's talking about Meal frequency doesn't matter for TEF, total calories or it matter. Like, like these ideas were uh, formulated and fleshed out through bodybuilding.com forums and body recomposition forums and articles by, I, I might be missing a few like Lane's a real OG too, obviously Lane Norton, mm. but like, like the free content that these guys put out on their websites and on forums in the... 06, 07 to like 2011 timeframe and beyond are so, so good and stand the test of time. And so much of it, 90 plus percent hasn't changed that going back and combing through those uh, articles and, and conversations um, is is as good as any book that we could recommend. And again, are free. 
Like you can go there literally right now and check it out. I remember being in my like nutrition classes in college and literally sitting in those classes with my laptop open reading Lyle's articles. Mm -hmm. And and I learned, dude, I, I think I've read, I have, especially some of the newer articles that have nothing to do with n nutrition and fitness, but every article on Lyle's website pertaining to nutrition and strength training, mm -hmm. I've read at least, at least three times, e every single one. There are some that I've probably read 20 times plus. Um, those articles, everything from not only the research and, and, and the accuracy and how helpful it is, but the formatting makes it so easy to read. Um, his, the way he explains it makes it unbelievably simple. His dry humor is hilarious. Um, like Lyle's free content on his website is unbelievable. Uh, so yeah, I think if you want to learn nutrition stuff, Lyle, Alan, and Martin, the top three, which by the way, I had Alan on my podcast a couple weeks ago and he told me that Martin was a student of Lyle's, which I didn't know. Interesting. Yeah. So because we, we had essentially the same conversation about how, you know, they were like, you know, like you said, the three pillars on which the whole industry stands. Mm -hmm. And and he told me, he was like, yeah, so Martin actually started as a, as a student of Lyle's, which it makes sense now, but I, mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of that. I remember reading some of their, I think it was on the body recomposition forums, the back and forth between those two. Mm, yeah, yeah. Like good, healthy debates. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I didn't know that. But yeah. And then, you know, uh, Zoe uh, shouted out our book, Eat It, which which yeah, we can throw on the list. Why not? A little self-promotion never hurt anybody. Yeah. That's a good book. It is a good book. Uh, oh, wait. You know what? I'm going to bring up a different topic. I love it. I, I hopped on the phone with the, this morning with, uh, with a woman in the mentorship. Uh, her name is Deb. Uh, Deb is awesome. She's absolutely amazing. She's super consistent. Um, just a, a smart, kind, genuine individual who puts in a tremendous amount of effort. And and we've been we were going over some of her content on social media, and her captions are fantastic. Her her ideas for content are fantastic. Her her execution of the of the information is fantastic. The hashtags are super well done. You know, like I could tell she paid attention to the Instagram growth guide and the mentorship, like everything was great. The one, and I told her all this, I said, there's one thing that I think that needs to change. And I was looking at her reels and her videos. When I was watching her reels and videos, there were a couple things going on. But the main thing is when I, when I was talking to her on the phone, I was like, I was talking to a friend. It was funny and we were laughing and it was like, it was a great voice and tone of conversation. As soon as she hits record on her camera, everything changes. She's, she gets very like, her eyes glaze over. She will not look at the camera. She'll look at herself. Mm -hmm. So like, she, it's like, she's not making eye contact. It's as though you're talking with someone and they're not making, it's like, they're looking at your nose and not your eyes. It's like, it's not, not, it's like, you're like what the fuck is on my nose type of a thing. Mm -hmm. And the way that she, I, after I told her this, she was like, yeah, I always get so worried. I asked, I said, do you have a script that you're reading off of? Because it sounds very scripted. There's no ahs, there's no ums, there's no likes. It's just like, if you want three ways to improve your fitness, here's how. Jump cut. Number one, this is like, eat more protein. And I was like, listen, the information you're giving is great. It's great information. And and the, like the editing of the video is great and all that. But it looks like y you are like you are reading off a script and there's n it's not you it's not real it's like a robot and in a world in which if you were the first within the first 100 people to be making content online that would be great this would be, it would be totally fine because people would be like, oh, this is great information. I didn't know. Awesome. Well, now there's a lot of fucking people making content online. And if you want to stand out, it's not just about the information. It's how you present the information. And the best way to present the information is like yourself. Mm. This is the best way. It doesn't have to be exuberant. Doesn't have to, But like you're talking to a friend. This is one of the most important things. Because when people are fighting for attention, literally 
fighting for attention on social media. If you're not being real, it's very easy to sniff out. It's and it's like it's not as fun, it's not as exciting, it's uh it it seems staged and all of that. So my advice to Debo is I was like, I want you to look in the camera hole, like look in the camera hole, like and imagine the camera hole is the eyeball of someone you're talking to. And I want you to because what she was saying, what she did is she like would start and stop the camera over and over, like do one clip, start, stop, start, stop. And I was like, hit record and let it roll and do not stop. Do the entire video. And I want you to to talk like you're talking to, to a real person. And if you say like, like, or um, or whatever, that's okay. People do that in real conversation. It's not a big deal. People know you, if you're having a conversation with someone and their face isn't changing shape, like if they're not moving their eyebrows or they're not smiling or frowning or like making faces, like I am, like if you're not doing something, it looks weird. It looks like, like what, like did you get Botox and you can't like move the muscles in your face type of a thing? You want to be animated. You And it doesn't have to be over animated. It just has to be like a real conversation with a friend. So let's say you're talking about, I don't know, how to stay full in a calorie deficit. And you're like, hey, here are three ways to stay full in a calorie deficit. And there's no tonality change. There's nothing in your face versus like, all right, listen, if you're hungry in a calorie deficit, pay attention. Here are three ways to stay full while you're in, while you're in a dieting phase. Way better. And it's just the difference between when you're trying to talk to the camera versus when you're trying to talk to an individual. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the best things that you can do is you don't have to be like me. You don't have to be like anybody else. You just have to be yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the best part of this. But if you're, if you're trying to be a robot that doesn't make any spelling errors or grammatical – spelling errors when you speak. It doesn't make a grammatical error when you speak. that doesn't say like or um or – if you're trying to do that, then you're never going to be – it's never going to be real. It's, people aren't going to connect with you. You ha Be yourself and it's the best thing you could possibly be. Awesome. Yeah. Completely agree. Thanks for sharing that. That's I feel like that's a good one to end on, to be honest. Like, yeah. Yes. I was like, I want to talk about that. No, that was that was perfect and really, really, really good advice that we should all take to heart. The fitness business mentorship is officially on sale. It starts right now. If you're listening to this, the gates are open, three hundred dollars off of uh, the initiation fee. We only do this twice per year. If you are looking to build your business, if you're looking to take out all of the guesswork, if you are looking to become a better coach, if you want to surround yourself with like-minded individuals and help each other grow and have Jordan and my guidance, then you can sign up right now for $300 off the mentorship. That's it. I'm not even going to add to it. That was perfect. $300 off. Let's fucking go. Link in the show notes. Bang. Have a great day. We'll see you next week. Weekly uploads. Have a great week. We'll see you. See, we better see you inside the mentorship. All right. See you soon. Have a good one.